Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session and thanks for joining us. This is a really important webinar topic. I'm Nikki Jobikik from Lookup Strata and I'm also the Managing Director of Tower Body Corporate, a body corporate management company in Queensland. I'm your host for today's session. We've assembled a diverse panel to offer an overview of the current Strata Insurance Commission models, what is wrong and right with the system today and whether improvements are needed in the future. Is a better, fairer model required? And if so, what should that look like? We thank all panellists for their time. We have a lot to cover, so I'll briefly introduce each panellist as they present their viewpoint this morning. If you're a regular webinar watcher, you will have seen some of these faces before. And during the first half of the session, each panellist will have up to five minutes to present their thoughts. And this will be followed by a discussion, which will include submitted questions. Now, before we begin, we'd like to mention that the information in this session, including the discussions arising from submitted questions, is not legal advice and should not be relied upon as legal advice. You should always seek independent advice before acting on the information contained in the session. And also the views expressed in this webinar are those of individual panelists today and not necessarily my views or those of Look Up Strata. Now, as our first panelist, we're delighted to welcome Chris Duggan. Today, Chris is representing SCA National. Chris is the current president of Strata Community Association Australasia, the peak industry body for Strata. And Chris is also the group managing director of the Bright and Duggan Property Group, incorporating a number of leading strata and facilities management businesses in Australia. Now, welcome, Chris. We're really happy to have you here and thanks for joining us. Nikki, thank you so much for having me along and hello to all of your viewers out there. Um, it's an incredibly important topic and it's one that I think it's appropriate that we discuss with such a broad cross-section of panellists. Um, and at the outset, I don't think this is about demonising insurance. It's about getting a better understanding and the perspectives that form that marketplace of which commission is an important part, but not the only part. So my overview I want to break down is three pieces. One is SCA's position and how we formed and what we're doing. The second is to talk around the perception and that lack of understanding or in fact a need for better understanding. And finally, the reality. So where are we at with commissions in Australia? And I might start with that first because I think that frames the conversation. Um, so any of your viewers, I'm not sure which state they're in, but no matter where they are, the conversation around commissions is not new. And in fact, if you're from New South Wales, it goes back many, many years. What the most recent conversation was in 2015 with the Strata Law Review, where there was a huge amount of conversation. But because you've got panellists and, and uh, attendees from across the country, I'll take it to a federal level. Um, the most recent discussions, and I say most recent because this is an ongoing conversation, we've had the ACCC review into Northern Australia, precipitated obviously by the need for better access to affordable and, uh, and the access to any insurance in that part of the market. The Hain Royal Commission, the ASIC review of conflicted remuneration, the Trowbridge reports, which I'll go through all three phases, and finally, the quality of advice review. So this gives you a feel for the extent of conversation outside of the strata sector into commissions more generally. And one thing I would say is that Michelle Levy, who uh, wrapped up her quality of advice review only recently, made recommendations following her own independent review to say that there are circumstances where uh, commissions should be retained. And in fact, the, the government of the time now, uh, this was uh, undertaken initially under the past government and now those recommendations endorsed under the current uh, government have agreed to accept the retention of commission subject to informed consent by those consumers. Again, what SCA's view is. So I want to talk about SCA's role in this because I think we've got an important role in trying to bridge that gap of understanding. Uh, the single most important thing around commissions is disclosure and transparency. Um, getting strata insurance right for the consumer has been our focus and making sure that our managers and our members and our brokers and our underwriters and everyone that comes under our umbrella has that same focus on ensuring a commitment to transparency and disclosure. In almost every jurisdiction in Australia, strata managers now are required to, by law, to disclose in various capacities. However, we think we can go further. And off the back of the Trowbridge report, which we were heavily involved with, uh, we've agreed to implement the phase one recommendations effective this year. So we've moved well ahead of any regulators. We've worked in consultation with NEBA, who I think are introducing their code of conduct at the back end of this year at the same time, to bring forward a regime of upfront disclosure that brings it all together. So this is well in advance of what the regulators ask, and it's bringing all of that information around who gets paid and what at the point when the consumer makes that choice. 
We think that's a huge leap forward in terms of bringing the information around commissions, the structures around commercial arrangements into the light at that point in time. And our members are committed to doing that to ensure that we support the, uh, the consumers in strata. That best practice, guys, we hope to be available at the end of the year. Um, moving forward, one of the other critical things, and I'm mindful I've only got five minutes, is noting the role and understanding how that works. And I've seen, even from some of the questions that have been provided, that there is still a disconnect in what the role of the strata manager is. The strata manager is a critical element in the, in the placement, the advice and the renewal process of insurance. We had Deakin University undertake an independent re, uh, report to identify the individual functions of a strata manager. And there are 47 functions broadly grouped into the quotation, procurement, placement and renewal process, the insurance valuation process, the insurance claims process. And Unless you've had a claim and experienced the strata manager being on site, and I can point to particularly the Northern Rivers and areas that were inundated more recently, uh, strata managers were at the core of those resolutions. That's in addition to insurance record keeping, insurance advice, the negotiation phase, and the financing. So when people understand the role of the strata manager and the importance of that to not just supporting the placement, but also what goes on throughout the year, it's an incredibly important part of that. I would say that the renewal process, Nikki, that today starts the day after placement. We have many schemes that can't get or have unfavourable terms because the compliance, repairs, defect management, government piece has not been properly communicated, and that's when the strata manager's role is, is you know, comes to the fore. Um, lastly, and I'm mindful of the time, I just want to talk about circling back to that perspective issue and the need for us to work together around transparency, consistency and best practice. Strata managers are there to help, to support and to facilitate a very complicated insurance product at the moment. They need to be remunerated. What form of remuneration that comes in needs to be the consumer's choice. And we're not advocating that commission is the only pathway, but it is one very accepted and now hopefully very transparent pathway for how that works. But you need to be mindful of, you can have a fee for service, you can have uh, additional fees, you can have net brokerage. All of that needs to be a choice and a consumer discussion that happens at the point they enter into an arrangement with a strata manager. Okay, thanks so much, Chris, for presenting. Uh, so now I'd like to invite Ani along to, to speak. So Ani Kakulapati is a Chief Custom Officer at CHU. He has a Bachelor of Commerce and a Master's in Accounting, and he's been involved in the insurance industry since 2008. And thanks so much, Ani, for joining us this morning. Pleasure, Nikki. Thank you so much. So the common question that we get as an underwriting agency is, if insurance commissions are not paid, is it possible to reduce insurance premium or they say, would it allow us to provide more affordable insurance options to our customers? Well, the question is like, can we still maintain the same level of service? That's how I put it. But the reality is that paying commissions for strata managers and brokers is a common practice in the insurance industry. It has been for many years. My personal opinion is this is a very, very easy, simple, right way to remunerate people who deserve it. But we believe that by eliminating commissions, we can pass on all the savings onto our customer in the form of lower premiums, which is simply not true, because we would still need the support and cooperation of our strata managers and brokers to deliver what our customers expect from us, because they provide valuable services to our customers and they deserve to be compensated for their work, as I mentioned before. Because at the end of the day, our primary objective as a collective, whether a strata manager, broker, or an underwriting agency, is to provide the best insurance options to our customers. Because we cannot forget the fact as underwriting agencies, especially in Strata, we do not have any advertisement sort of a spend. You haven't seen any ads that go out. But for us to reach the end customer and they understand who, I mean, we get this very, very commonly whenever I say to people that I work for CHU, the first question they ask is CGU, because they never heard of CHU. And they don't have to hear about CHU because we've got our partners in terms of strata managers and brokers who helps us out to actually deliver and, and be in the business that we are in. So for, for me, if you compare this industry with other industries where the commission percentage is a lot more than what we actually have in strata industry. So we don't actually believe in terms of, you know, the whole saving, if there is no commission, will go translate into say 20% less. So I don't think that's that's the right way to look at it. The right way to look at it, as Chris mentioned, there are 47 things that a strata manager has to do, and this has been done by Deakin. So the example that I would probably give is in the middle of the night, if there is a leak, it's not the insurance company who gets a phone call, it's the strata manager who gets a phone call. 
and the complexity in strata that's been increasing over the last number of years, the brokers are playing a very important role as well. So in the grand scheme of things, everyone's got their own role to play. And, and the structure that we have in the self-regulation that we are going through at the moment is only going to make it better. But you know, from, from CHU's perspective, the model that we have at the moment is the best model that we can have for the industry. There are things that can be done better. And as I said, we are on the front foot and SCA is doing a great job as well. So we are self-regulating. We are getting more detailed in terms of explaining to the end user who gets what in terms of remuneration. So probably that's the aspect we should continue to work on as an industry. But as I mentioned before, to translate those insurance premiums 20% less to the end customer is not is not something that we can do. So that's me. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks so much, Arnie. That was great. Okay, Damon, you're up next. So we've got Damon Cassie. Damon is National Strategic Partnership Manager for Whitbread Insurance Brokers. He holds a degree in commerce and finance and has over 22 years of experience in the Australian strata industry. Welcome, Damon. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks, Nikki. And I must have got my bio wrong, actually. It's been about 20-odd years in insurance, uh, the last 10 years in strata insurance. And I think I offer some unique insights as well as spending the last couple of years in a specialist strata insurance broking role previously. I was working with, with Arnie and the team at CHU as an underwriting manager with the insurer hat on. Uh, fairly recently, uh, my wife and I were fortunate enough to buy an investment property in strata, which is something after 10 odd years working in strata insurance, I was a bit wary about doing. So we're now in that game. So it's the reason I bring that up is I think Chris touched on a key word, which is perception. Whether we're a broker or an insurer or a strata manager, we need to bear in mind the customer needs, particularly the customer's perceptions. So my perception's a little bit different now. Experience as an insurer, I'm, I'm now a broker in the strata space, but also I'm a consumer as well. So it's about what the perception is. I think I'll just touch on a couple of points. Chris, you might as well have uh, written my presentation for me. I won't bring it up, we'll just talk off it, but you've made a couple of key points there. Look, at the moment, we need to be very, very careful about we've, we're, we're in a much more complex and much harder strata insurance market than when I first came into it about 10 years ago. We had virtually no or very small excesses. Um, the policy wording was fairly generic, it was fairly well priced. And as we've all seen, one of the rooms seen over the last five years, premium increasing with the cost pressures on the insurers and the financial market, we've seen excesses. Uh, increase and get more complex. What we as service providers do, whether you're the broker, the strata manager, the lawyers, the, the, the trade providers, is we need to be much more professional in our, in, in our advice and we need to be much more articulate. We need to articulate what the customer is getting around the insurance product. In terms of insurance commissions and broker fees, we need to articulate, and Chris touched on this very well, what the consumer is getting, what bang they're getting for their buck. There's been a, a, I think there's still a lack of understanding and we're getting better at it as an industry and articulating to the owners corporation and the lot owners and the stakeholders, what value and what services the strata manager provides. I know we talk about the Deacon report, really well uh, summarized the 45, 47, different uh, responsibilities that strata managers have around strata uh, insurance management, claims management, the process. And as Arnie said, there's a or referred to, there's a different a different value add that the strata managers provide there. They're the hands on, they're at the coal face, they're there at four o'clock in the morning if um, there's an emergency call out or a make safe. Whereas you may have an insurance broker involved where they're dealing with the insurer. They've got the leverage with the insurer, they understand the policy wording. Um, also, as has been referred to before, in a more complex market with um, more consumer demand, more consumer concerns around pricing and the complexity, insurance brokers are becoming more and more prevalent in the Australian insurance market you know, across the country because we can we we can open up the market. We can open the the market up to Australian insurers that will only transact via broker. Okay, so we're coming in at different angles. We're providing. What sometimes the perception, use that word again to the OC, is, well, hang on, I'm paying a commission to the strata manager, I'm paying a broker fee to the broker, you're all looking after insurance, what's the difference? We need to, and we're getting better at it, but we need to articulate what the, the value add is and what the fee for service is there, okay? And that's something we just need to keep driving more and more and more. 
as has been referred to, and we've had various reports, legislative regulatory uh, reports, we've got uh, from an insurance broker's point of view, we've got the NEBA code of practices getting updated uh, later this year, which makes it even more onerous as it should be on the insurance brokers and our authorised reps and the strata managers to be even more and much more clear about the disclosure and transparency. Disclosing, so tick, what are you doing for the, the service fee? And how much is it? Disclosing the commission and the broker fee and the renewal advice and the quotes, which we do at Whitbread very, very diligently for each of the quotes we receive. There are unfortunately still some brokers out there, some that are not necessarily strata specialists, to be fair to them, that aren't, aren't appropriately disclosing the various earnings and commissions. So we need to get better at that. And we are as an industry, which is good because the consumer needs to know why they're paying for something, what they're getting for it, and the and the amounts and the breakdowns. Just lastly, I'll just finish off. I think also my, my broad uh, learning from the industry over the last 10 years has been that we, again, we've got much more complex. The, the, the standard model of commission plus broker fee when you need to go to and use a broker to essentially open up the market or outsource some of your, your uh, responsibilities, uh, get that support is the old standard of up to 20% plus a broker fee, that one size fits all. Yeah, look, at a lot of the time it works. Uh, sometimes it's much less really than what the strata managers actually uh, probably needs to earn, particularly on the higher risks, all right? Um, we are seeing, just from a broker's insight, we are seeing alternate model, models, okay? So the standard model does work as long as it's articulated and transparent, I made that point. We are seeing other models. There are companies out there. We talk about disruptors in the industries. There are companies out there, um, property managers, strata managers, applying... Um, Chris referred to a gross versus net model. We've traditionally um, uh, ran a net model, which is basically obtaining the insurance cover net without commission. That's been done for years on larger risks. We're talking 50, $100 million plus. That saves a lot of money on GST, uh, stamp duty, fire services living in those states. We'll apply that model, then apply a broker fee that, that may be shared with the strata manager that's commensurate with fee for service. What we're seeing in the market is some strata managers now applying that net model across their SME portfolio, and then either doing two things, looking at a management fee for service additionally, or sharing the broker fee that's added onto that, that's commensurate to the fee for service, explaining that to the customer and disclosing that. So we are seeing that in the market. We do need to, I, I dare say, be a bit more agile. So the one size fits all uh, model sometimes can be, we can think outside the back box on that on the net model as well. And I recommend we look at that more and more on our uh, SME portfolios. Excellent. Oh, thanks, Nikki. Wonderful. Cheers. Thanks so much. Okay, now we'll move on to, to Will. So Will Markin, Will joined Tower Body Corporate, a Queensland body corporate company as general manager and senior strata manager in 2020. A licensed and accredited strata manager, he has widespread experience across all forms of commercial, industrial and residential schemes and Will assists our Queensland audience with answers to their body corporate questions and joins us regularly to present webinars. So thanks for joining us again today, Will. Hi. Hi, Nikki. Thanks for having me on and hello to everyone out there. I'm a body corporate manager and that means I speak to customers every single day. And I think what often gets lost in the role of body corporate managers is that we, we act as consumer advocates. We want the buildings to succeed because our, our business succeed when the buildings succeed. So it's not like we're setting out to have any kind of agenda that uh, somehow manipulates or controls buildings to get a worse outcome for them. That's actually bad for the industry. We want, we want all of the owners out there to have a good outcome ultimately for their buildings. Uh, in that context, I think that the uh, commission system, it's got some pros and cons, but it's a valid model and it's been working for a large number of years, successfully delivering uh, insurance products to body corporate owners out there. So it's not necessarily correct if we just sort of start tearing it apart or, or we, if we completely look to tear it down altogether. You need to respect the fact that it has been successful and it has worked in many cases. The main objection seems to be that it's not transparent. Well, everyone here seems to be agreeing that it should be more transparent. Chris is saying work is being done to that effect. Uh, I don't think there should be any issues with transparency over the model. And I don't think managers should need to feel embarrassed about the model. What I'd encourage all consumers out there to do is if you've got questions, speak to your manager. Uh, ask, ask them about how it works. Ask them about how much remuneration they're getting paid. Uh, they should feel confident in answering back to you. And maybe if they're not confident, that could be a red flag. And if, but if they are, you should that should be a positive flag in, in your assessment of how the system works. 
I think what consumers really need to be aware about there is that there isn't an automatically better system available. Uh, managing insurance issues takes body corporate managers a great deal of time. It's very stressful. Part of the industry is a, is a, it's a point where buildings can get won and lost all of the time. And we find that work actually very hard. Uh, and I think what you'll find is if you want to take the manager out of that process, managers might be happy because you're taking off some of their stress, but it's not really possible because the work that they do on a daily basis is always considering insurance and it's always considering how the running of the building will affect the insurance at some point. So you, you can't really have a system where managers aren't involved. Uh, good, well, perhaps there is one, but you know, I certainly haven't, I haven't certainly haven't seen that system if it is possible. So if you change or take away the commission system, uh, you have to look at what happens next and how those systems might work. Well, if the work continues to be done by managers on a system that's not based on commissions, they'll just change their remuneration structures and they will be they'll be paid one way or the other. So I don't know if managers necessarily are going to lose if you change what the commission system is. Um, if you change the system to having brokers do more of the work, well, brokers are going to want to be paid for the work that they do. So I don't know if that necessarily results in a better uh, system for consumers. And if you change the system to one where committee members do all of the work, well, you might get a slightly cheaper because committee members uh, are volunteers, but I, I don't really don't know if all of those committee members want to take on the stress and the emotional toil that body corporate managers put into it. Uh, I think that most of the time that most buildings would find that quite difficult. So for managers, I think it doesn't really matter too much if you have commissions or not. Companies will just adapt to the marketplace. That's what they are. They're competitors with each other and they just change, the, they just change their offers based on what, uh, what will bring them in the most business. But for owners, you've got to be aware that you can change the system, but there isn't really a, a, a wonderful alternative out there and all of the alternative has pros and cons. That's my point for today. Thanks very much. Thanks so much, Will. Okay, now we're speaking to Liz Florence. And Liz is the founding director of Abode Strata Management, a company located in WA and established in 2004. Abode Strata achieved the SCA Strata Management Practice Standard, making it the third company in Australia to do so. We welcome Liz. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, thank you, Nikki, and hi, all. Um, just want to say I concur with a lot of the comments that have already um, been presented this morning, so I possibly will be uh, trying not to repeat those as I move forward. Um, as Nikki said, I've got 20 years of experience in the um, industry. Um, I personally understand the confusion and frustration surrounding the increased cost of strata schemes because, as Will mentioned, we try and form a relationship with the people whose properties we manage. We're actually there for the long haul. We're not there for the short term burn. Um, and we really just want to form partnerships. Uh, we see their pain when the general meeting occurs every year and their premiums can change. Um, commissions, I'd like to say is a dirty word. As a strata manager, I like to call this remuneration for services, which has been outlined prior. We've all seen over the last seven years a significant rise in insurance premiums. This, of course, has seen us look within and see where can we make cost savings, which is why we're starting to look at commissions. I, can, I have a couple of um, strata properties as well, as Damon mentioned, he does too. Um, and I have felt the impact of the insurance increases. Also in our business, we're also seeing increase in insurances for business insurance, some 20% over the last couple of years. Obtaining the right insurance covers requires thorough research and staying up to date with policy details and claim procedures, something that we all don't deny. It's a very complex industry and we as strata managers find that we like to work in well with the insurer and also the broker. And together we all form part of a puzzle to see the best outcome for that property. It's not the matter of, in some instances, yes, we can see industry where renewals are just flicked around and they are transactions. However, with the correct relationship-based consideration of your property, you can actually achieve good premiums and keep your property in order. We haven't really sort of thrown some numbers around, and I'm just conscious of the fact that we have a few viewers here um, and some of them are owners. The DECA report showed in 2020 there were 165,000 strata companies. There was over a billion dollars paid in total for insurance. $830 million of that went to premiums and $230 million went to taxes, duties and GST. That's just under 30% paid in government taxes. 
which is effectively the government commission. So, you know, let's look at the elephant in the room. We're all talking about commissions, but what does Strata receive for their 23 million? I think it's a great idea, transparency, as well as showing the individual commission or remuneration to each strata manager. We can start to uh, correlate the data on these taxes, stamp duty, and we can utilise that to advocate back to government. As Chris mentioned earlier, and Will did too, the Strata Community Association Management Agreement, I know WA, we have 47 insurance duties and services that your strata manager provides throughout the year. Now we're talking throughout the year because these are duties that are provided throughout the year. You know, 12, 12 months, however, if it's a new policy, as Chris said, they can start two months out or three months out getting the property in order. These services include quotation, procurement, placement, renewal valuation, claims, record keeping advice, insurer negotiation, liaison and insurance finance services. Yes, you have a choice as an owner. Your strata manager can provide these services either in exchange for commission, which I like to call remuneration, or you can pay for it on an as needs be basis, which is as an additional service fee. Brokers also receive commissions for the service they provide. I also agree that sometimes, and we find this too, when we see insurance um, proposals, we're not always seeing the broker or admin fee. The use of insurance Brokers by strata managers and the relationship that we have, however, has been a long-standing practice with commissions traditionally shared equally. And I too would welcome transparency for everyone in this area. If you still don't believe a strata manager should receive commission, the Deakin University report highlights that commissions supplement the true cost of servicing your strata company. Whilst we agree this is an issue that needs to be addressed, and that's why we're having this discussion today, Removing remuneration or commissions to the strata manager would lead to a significant increase in your strata management fees for, in order for us to maintain service levels. Our costs as a business are continuing to increase the same way that your strata company's costs are increasing. You are not alone. Everyone in the room here feels your pain. One solution is to introduce separate charging of insurances at an hourly rate. Apparently, when surveyed, though, 40% of those lot owners indicated that insurance commissions should be abolished, and 30% believed that commissions needed better regulation. However, when these owners were confronted with the realisation that strata management fees could increase by 25% without commissions, they changed their position. So transparency and advocacy are crucial for us to make informed decisions, even as the owners too. In conclusion, it's a complex field, but by working together, we can find a reasonable solution that benefits everyone involved. Today, I would like to see that we have industry people here and that we could actually come out with some great resolution. Thank you for your time. Excellent. Thanks so much, Liz. Okay, and we're moving on to Tyrone now. So Tyrone Shandyman, who is today representing the Australian Consumers Insurance Lobby. Tyrone is the chairperson of the Australian Consumers Insurance Lobby, an advocacy group for consumers on issues associated with insurance. He's also the managing director of Strata Insurance Solutions, an insurance brokerage firm servicing Australia. Tyrone is a lookup strata regular. He has been responding to our audience's insurance questions for years, and he joined us for many webinars. So thanks again for joining us today, Tyrone. Thanks for having me, Nikki. It's my pleasure today to be speaking on behalf of the Australian Consumers Insurance Lobby to look up strata for the first time. And I wanted to speak to Look Up Strata today because at our annual general meeting on Tuesday, our organisation came up with five key consumer issues that we will be dealing with on insurance and commissions in Strata is one of those items that we will be actively lobbying for in the coming year. So I just wanted to talk today that um, I am in today's um, discussion going to be talking about some concerns around questionable practices in the industry. But I firstly just wanted to acknowledge the good acting strata managers out there. And there are many of you and many of you on this call that are doing the right thing by consumers. And I wanted to say thank you for doing that. So I just wanted to firstly start by saying that consumers are vulnerable clients. And why is that? Because they are made up of a committee that are volunteers who represent the building and change from year to year. They have limited experience on insurance and understanding what is in their interest and not. And they rely very heavily on their strata manager to make a buying decision. And the, the reason why they are, this is why they are susceptibly vulnerable to strata managers who are not doing the right thing and are not acting in the strata and the client's interest. 
I wanted to talk about the white elephant in the room as well, and that is the remuneration models and strata. And I'm not gonna have time to go through all of these, but I wanted to talk about the last one on this slide, which we think is unreasonable and excessive, where a broker takes a 20% commission and charges a 20% fee and shares it, shares it with, their, with the strata manager. Why do we think it's excessive and unreasonable? Because the majority of strata managers take a 20% commission and that's enough to service um, the, the insurance services on their insurance policy. And I myself, um, own and operate Strata Insurance Solutions, and I can't see how anyone could possibly justify a 20% commission and a 20% commission be on a Strata management policy. And if you're a consumer and you've got that commission model, you should ask your Strata manager why that is. And I think I'm going to talk to you about what the motivators are here. Obviously, the first one for strata managers is around profit, but we actually also think that there is a, a motivation of driving down strata management fees. And unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of consumers who have buyer's remorse after they engage a strata manager thinking that they're going to get a saving by reduced strata management fees, but it turns out the expenses in, in the strata um, management uh, in, the, in running their, their, their property are so much higher because of all of these ancillary extra costs that apply in the strata policy. So I wanted to talk later today about what, what are the practices that are harming consumers. I've got five minutes, so I, I won't have the time to talk about this, but I have asked Nikki if, if we can submit a question on this, and I hope to come back to this a little bit later. But I just wanted to talk to the proposals that the Strata Community Association have put forward in this regard. Um, look, we do think it's a great step, and it's a step in the right direction, and we like the idea of transparent disclosure of commissions, provided that it's done so in accordance with the John Trowbridge recommendations that he's put forward in a handbook recently, but we also just think that the proposals are simply lacking on a few areas around choice and consumer protection in, in some of these harmful practices that we've, we've come across. So we have actually written to the Strata Community Association expressing our concerns. Um, we asked them to engage with us to talk about these issues and unfortunately um, we gave them a six-week period time to respond and that period lapsed on Friday. But I just wanted to kind of point out that at the moment, our organisation is not calling for a complete ban on commissions in strata. We, our, actual, our preference would be that the strata management industry properly, properly self-regulates. Um, and unfortunately for our organisation at our annual general meeting on Tuesday, we came to the conclusion um, that we don't feel at the moment the industry can properly self-regulating because they're only meeting one of the three points that we think that, that they should be, be, be focusing on. And unfortunately, it is leading our organisation to walk towards calling for a complete ban on commissions in strata. So what have we decided at our annual general meeting? So we've decided at our AGM that it's time that consumers had a voice on this issue and that more of these issues were discussed and that more consultation occurred with the strata, with, the, with consumers in this industry. So on the 12th of July, we are going to be holding a consumers forum for strata insurance practices. Um, and if for more information, go to our website um, and the news menu of our website. Um, at this stage, we're not inviting strata managers to attend this forum, um, but we are going to invite consumer groups like the Owners Corporation Network, Unis Corpor Unit Owners Association of Queensland, Choice. Um, we also have reached out to John Trowbridge because we feel his report very succinctly highlights what the consumer issues are. Um, we would love John to, um, a, to a, attend our forum and have a chat to consumers about the issues that we're seeing. But we also want to hear from buildings where the strata manager has not done the right thing by them or consumers that just want to see um, greater change and, and, and greater um, uh, changes in this industry. And final slide, I just wanted to make a, a point to the strata managers. Many of you who are good acting strata managers out there, um, if you value your commission um, and you don't want organisations like ours lobbying for complete ban on commissions and talking to the ACCC and ASIC and going and putting news stories out there, which would, could bring this industry into disrepute, and you believe that the industry needs to do more to protect consumers, then I appeal to you to write to the Strata Community Association and ask that they get more serious about this issue. And the final point I'd like to make as well is that um, we are a, a membership organisation and our lobbying depends on strength in numbers. And if you believe consumer issues need to be dealt with on, on this in this regard, please join our, our, our association. Um, so thank you very much for having me today, Nikki. Um, I really do look forward to answering some of the questions later on. Um, and yes, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you.
Okay, thanks Tyrone. Thank you for, for sharing those viewpoints with us. Okay, we go on to Karen Stiles now. So Karen is the Executive Director of the Owners Corporation Network, which is a network of owner, co owners corporations run by volunteers. Karen joined the OCN in the early 2000s after a disastrous off the plan purchase that was riddled with defects. And in 2012, she became the first employee of OCN and the team has evolved and grown from there. It has been delightful to work with Karen on a few of our webinars and video projects in the past. So Karen, we welcome you back today. Thanks for inviting OCN to participate in this panel session, Nikki. Healthy debate is a good thing as it helps shape public policy for the common good. As the peak body for strata owners, OCN supports a healthy strata management sector with an appropriate non-conflicted fee-based business model. However, a regime has evolved whereby the uh, declining strata management fees are subsidised by insurance commissions. This isn't a business model we support as it's not transparent and can inflate strata management income far beyond the service provided. And I'm thinking about far north Queensland premiums increasing up to sevenfold a few years back as an example. It also leaves the strata management agency vulnerable to owners deciding to place their insurances directly with a broker, thus forfeiting that uh, much needed uh, supplementary income. And it distorts the real cost of strata management through the detriment of strata managers who do not accept commissions. The strata management industry is eager to be seen as professional. Owners in increasingly large and complex schemes need and want trusted advisors. But a lack of transparency, particularly if discovered inadvertently, can impact on client trust and bring other actions into question. Far better for owners and industry, for brokers and strata managers to charge a separate fee for service that doesn't gross up the premium after taxes are applied. And for the record, OCN also opposes the triple tax on a tax, the emergency services levy in New South Wales, then stamp duty on top of that, and finally GST on top of that. It's a disincentive to holding discretionary cover and a huge impost on mandatory strata insurance holders. Owners' corporations are best served by an advisor who is qualified to provide personal advice and holds PI cover to protect the owners' corporation should an error or omission occur. Those brokers must also be independent of strata management firms and free of cross-share ownership and other related entity conflicts. Removing the commission also removes any conflict in selection of insurance companies or brokers from whom the strata managers seek quotes due to the competing commission arrangements offered. Um, charging a separate fee for service also rewards well-run schemes that reduce risk and have a low claims history, as the commissions inflating the insurance costs would greatly exceed any claims management costs incurred. This is especially true for larger schemes where premiums are significant in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. OCN first called for conflicted payments to be prohibited in its 2012 New South Wales Strata Law Review submissions, as Chris alluded to earlier. Specifically, we called for the role of strata managing agents to be defined to have responsibility for and perform a role in ensuring the sound governance of the scheme and carry out their responsibilities and the business of the scheme free of conflicts of interest and not receive commissions and benefits from third parties. OCN sees the benefits of removing commissions to strata managers, uh, comparable strata management fees providing a level playing field, a viable strata management sector with income certainty, and the benefits to owners, obviously, increased transparency, accountability, competition, confidence regarding their strata management and insurance cover, and lower premiums as a result of greater competition. Thanks for letting us contribute to the current conversation. Thanks so much, Karen. Thanks for sharing that. And then we move to our last presenter before we go into the discussion section. And this is Michael Kleinschmidt. So Michael is a partner at Bugden Allen Graham Lawyers. He has specialised in strata law for over 20 years. And during this time, he served all of the peak stakeholder groups and acted for almost all of the different stakeholder groups in almost every conceivable strata matter type. Michael is also a lookup strata regular. He responds to Queensland questions, which we thank him for. And he has joined us for some really interesting webinars over the years. So thanks again for joining us, Michael. Uh, my absolute pleasure, and I hope to continue to do so into the future. 
Um, thank you to all my earlier panel members. You've really uh, opened my eyes. Uh, I had some suspicions about a few things, but you've made a lot of things clear for me. Um, now, the wonderful thing about lawyers is that uh, we're kind of like robots. We're programmed to detect particular things. And when we detect those particular things, we go into a bit of a routine. It's an analysis that's beat into us over many, many years, including in our training. And when I started to look at this issue of insurance commissions, which has been on the periphery of my practice for many years, and has started to come to the forefront more recently, um, the thing that leapt into my mind was uh, the law of fiduciaries. Now, you've probably heard that word before, our listeners. You may not appreciate what it is. Uh, at law, uh, there are a number of fiduciary relationships, agent and principal, company director um, and company, doctor and patient, lawyer and client. And these are recognised relationships at law um, where uh, there is a relationship of vulnerability. Um, uh, one party has superior power over another uh, and they're relationships of trust and confidence. So what I'm going to talk about today, uh, there are five points that I've, I'd like to make uh, and we'll scoot through them reasonably quickly. So. My first question here is, in this relationship um, between uh, strata managers and their bodies corporate, are strata managers fiduciaries? In my view, yes. Um, there's no doubt about that. If you look at comparable relationships, uh, director and company, well, in Queensland, uh, a committee member, uh, as strata managers are, they have the same sort of relationship. They're like a director of the committee. Agent in principle, um, they're called strata managing agents in New South Wales. Trustee and beneficiary is another relationship. And in Victoria, uh, the strata managers are trustees of the funds that are held. So that's a yes. The second question then are, are the fiduciary duties owed to the body corporate? Now I'll come to the fiduciary duties in a minute, but some years ago, you might remember the case of Arrow Asset Management, um, which was all to do with uh, you know, developers making a profit from the sale of management rights off the plan. And there was a question about whether or not the fiduciary duties were owed by the original owner, the developer, to the lot owners or to the body corporate. Now, in this case, um, it's the body corporate, uh, and that's the same with strata managing agents or strata managers. As fiduciaries, you owe obligations to your body's corporate. The third question is, when you're performing these 47-odd duties, um, uh, which I've heard now a couple of times this morning, um, who are you performing them for, uh, the body corporate? Um, and are they covered by the fiduciary duties? Well, yes, they are. They're performed as part of your role as strata managers. So, so far, the test for fiduciary duties is, is looking pretty solid in terms of being applicable. Now, the fiduciary duties are expressed in a weird way. They're sort of negative duties. The first one is the conflicts rule. And that rule is that a fiduciary, so a strata managing agent or a strata manager, should not be or place themselves in a position of conflict, whether between duties or between duty and interest. So that might be a duty that you owe between two particular bodies corporate or it might be between one body corporate and your own personal interest. So let's reflect on that one for a minute. The second rule is the purchasing rule. So a fiduciary, a strata manager, may not buy from or sell to the beneficiary, property over which the fiduciary duties extend, unless both the fiduciary relationship is founded on terms which give the fiduciary the right to sell or buy, uh, and full value is given after informed consent is received. And I'm going to come back to informed consent. Now, the third one is the most important one in this context of insurance commissions. Fiduciaries cannot use their position and by virtue of it to obtain a profit, benefit or other advantage without full informed consent of the beneficiary. So we've talked a lot about informed consent and I'm going to drill into that in a little while. Um, but before we do that, I want to have a chat about what happens if you breach these rules. So first thing you've got to do is ask yourself, does the breach occur during the period of the relationship? Now, with respect to those 47 odd duties um, that Dr. Nicole um, helped put together, um, yes, uh, almost all of them 
uh, when last I looked, were within the period of the fiduciary relationship. So then we come back to this issue of disclosure. And what does disclosure do? Well, I want to emphasize one point really heavily here. Disclosure is only a defense to a breach of the fiduciary duties, okay? By the time you need disclosure, you're already in breach of your fiduciary duty because you are already breaching one of the other rules, and in particular, the purchasing or, or the no-profit rule. Disclosure is a necessary precondition to fully informed consent, but it's not sufficient in and of itself. Disclosure is just handing over information. Informed consent means that the person, the body corporate, who has to make the decision has that information, but then is fully informed as to any other re uh, facts and circumstances that are relevant. And sometimes that means taking independent legal or financial advice before they can give that fully informed consent. So disclosure can be a defense against a breach of the no profits and purchasing rule, but it's not a defense against a breach of the conflicts rule. So you can't defend yourself with disclosure against a breach of your duty that you owe to two separate bodies corporate or a breach of the duty that you owe to a body corporate and your own personal interest. Michael, I just have to give you a time call. Sorry, I could listen to you all day, but I do have to mention that. <laughs> sure, I'll trot through the rest. Basically, the remedies for this are um, that you either have to account for the profit that you make or you've got to put your body corporate in the position as if you never made the breach. A couple of very other quick points. In Queensland, along with the other states, disclosure is mandatory under the legislation. Those legislative provisions do not authorise you to take conflicted remuneration. They only require you to affect disclosure. Now, if you look hard enough, you can find loopholes, but the difference between professionals acting ethically and everyone else is professionals acting ethically subscribe to a higher standard and they don't go looking for loopholes. I've seen, and the Trowbridge reports outline some of those sort of models. Look, um, I'll stop there um, so that everybody has fair time and I'll hit some of my other points once we get into the discussion. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. And hopefully that will be the way um, it moves ahead. So we're moving into the discussion section of the session now, everyone, just to let you know. And obviously you've seen we have, which is exactly what we wanted, had a really diverse range of, of viewpoints um, brought up in the, from the panellists. Um, during that section of the session. So thank you for sharing those with us. And I might just um, ask a question uh, and we'll see how we go uh, with time. So the first question I would like to ask is in the Trowbridge report, phase three states, in the absence of any regulation of intermediary, intermediary cha charges, it becomes a matter for each OC and its strata committee to challenge or negotiate with their strata manager and broker for a structure and levels of remuneration with which they are satisfied. And then John goes on to say, there is currently a distinct absence of transparent disclosure for most OCs and their strata committees. And as a result, most owners and their strata committees are not in the position to assess whether the charges are fair and in their best interest. So I'd just like to put this statement out there and ask, is it a fair statement? And Chris, maybe you could talk to this um, to begin with. Thanks, Nikki. Um, the, it's important to understand the series of reports that John did, phase one report into um, disclosure and transparency, phase two into intermediary structures and threat, uh, phase three into affordability and uh, accessibility of those uh, insurance products. Um, I think it's a fair statement, and I think it's, it, it is why the phase one report, including the process for more consistent, more timely, and more transparent disclosure regimes has been agreed to. Um, it's certainly why SCA agreed to bring it together ahead of what the legislation says in each of the states, so that that information does create a self-regulated marketplace where the decisions can be made at the right point. So I, don't, I think it's a fair assessment of what currently exists, which is a broader fabric of disclosures in each of the states and it brings it more consistent into a document hopefully where the consumer makes a choice choice up front they can see the way those various remuneration structures work okay thanks chris and karen would you like to speak on that as well just to say that uh consumers are as tyrone pointed out vulnerable for the most part and unaware of i guess their rights and you know 
their choices. Um, so we have to be very careful of that. And the more information they have, the better it will be for everybody. Okay, thanks, Karen. And Liz, would you like to, as a strata manager, contribute? Most definitely. We're all shareholders and um, we all really need to be conscious of our part in the decision making and what we're contributing to the outcome. I'm just a little bit confused by what Michael said. I'm not highly technical, but um, I do know with our general meetings, we actually do note prior to the next insurance re renewal um, that we will we may receive a commission, what that commission would possibly be, and we do actually disclose prior. So um, I think that's the, uh, the point that the owners can open the discussion because it has been noted to them at the general meeting, um, as well as throughout the year when the renewals typically um, do go through to the Strata Council because they're usually delegated with the duty to um, review those proposals. Um, and I think transparency is the key, um, definitely. Okay, Michael? I think this is not an understatement. Um, having done the research that I've done for today um, and given the amount of money that's involved in Strata across the country, if I was a body corporate manager right now, um, and I knew what I know, I would be very, very scared. I would put the potential level of claims against body corporate managers for a breach of their fiduciary duties as approaching the levels of compensation for asbestos. I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. The Trowbridge uh, manual, when you have a look at it, is sufficient to get you over the requirements in relation to uh, the entry into or the approval of insurance contracts. Um, but what Trowbridge doesn't do is to go back to the formation of the strata manager's contract and have a look at you know, what's being said there in terms of, am I going to get between 5 and 20%, for example. If you study fiduciary law, the level of information that you need to hand over to get a, a, def a proper defence going so that you can hang on to that commission is not, hey, um, here's the information at the point of contact when you're putting forward three different insurance proposals and you've said, I'm going to take 15% on each one. It, it's more than that. Trowbridge gets there for the renewal, um, but uh, I would be getting advice also in relation to when you are entering into your body corporate manager's contract with your body corporate to make sure that you are being fully transparent about what is going to happen at those AGMs and during those insurance renewals and for the 47 other things that you're doing to earn that commission. And it is a commission, it's not remuneration. Commission, um, fixed price bounty for delivering a client to someone, Remuneration, fee for service. I've done a job and this is how much time the job has taken and this is how much money I receive. So Michael, just on that, sorry, Nikki, does, um, does a broker have a fiduciary duty too then if they're not actually disclosing their commission on their um, policy, on their proposal? Yeah, brokers, are, it's an interesting position because um, uh, again, Trowbridge talks about this to an extent uh, he's not coming at it from a legal point of view, but you know the brokers are out there acting as agents as well, and mm. they're definitely part of this complex machinery. Um, you know, uh, I haven't looked at them specifically in advance of today's meeting, other than their interrelationship, you know, with body corporate managers. Um, are they a fiduciary uh, potentially? Uh, but I haven't researched that. I'll stick to my knitting, and I'll say that from my point of view, strata managers, one hundred percent. Okay, Damon, did you want to speak on that? Just very quickly. Um, first of all, yeah, we absolutely, from a broker's perspective, we have an absolute fiduciary duty. We should always, as someone that's likes to be professional and ethical and sleep at night, we have an absolute fiduciary duty to make sure we act in the best interests of our customers. And I would expect any strata managers that are acting as authorised reps of ourselves to be doing the same thing. That is a fundamental that then ties them with, and I know there's various contract of appointment structures around the states with uh, SCA. So I'll park that. That's um, that's really around the contracts of appointments will disclose the various services that the strata managers provide around insurance. From a broker's point of view, the fiduciary duty is crucial. We 
And again, I mentioned earlier, Woodbread, uh, we are very pedantic about breaking down the structures, including, uh, I think Liz mentioned very well, as, as SCA now and Tobridge uh, acknowledges. The other part of the problem here is we've got significant uh, multiple taxes, GST, stamp duties, whatnot. Fire service levies in some states um, is higher than the stamp duty. So that's 20, 30% of the product. And then you've got another broker fee and commission structure. So I'm not, I'm not the government, but from what the brokers and the strata managers do, again, we go back to being, we need to articulate what we're doing for that, okay? And then we need to be transparent about it. Now, we're in a free market. The customer, being the owner's corporation, and I accept there's a lack of knowledge out there, and we as an industry need to get them up to speed on this, they can shop around. But we need to make sure, and there are some brokers out there, and I will say that they're often non-strata specific brokers that perhaps aren't quite aware of the disclosure requirements that are not fully disclosing their items in terms of the commission and broker fees. That needs to be done better. The NEVA code of contact being updated later this year, October, November, should regulate that better. If it's up to the strata manager and the owners corporation to say, break this down for me, what am I paying for? What am I getting for that? And if they're not happy, shop around. If uh, I think I saw a slide before, if I was now put my customer hat on, I have to keep an arm's length because there's a conflict of interest there. But I'm fairly happy looking at my my understanding of the strata property that I'm I'm an investor in. I'm fairly happy with the broker fee that the broker's charging and the and the fee for service commission that the strata manager is uh, accepting because I know what they're doing and I think it's value for money. If I was getting charged 20% commission plus a 20% broker fee. I don't think would be their customer for very long. So those days should be gone. So it needs to be reasonable, okay? And we need to be professional and transparent about what we're charging the customer. Okay, thanks, Damon. And I'll jump to you, Tyrone. Thanks, Nikki. Just two points on that question. So I think on the issue of transparency, one of, one of the issues we have is, or, or problems we have with this is around the timing of when these commissions are disclosed. And a lot of the legislation talks about disclosing it at an annual general meeting. Unfortunately, by that point, the horse has already bolted because the a buying decision has already been made on the insurance policy. Um, and look, it's, it's pleasing to see the SCA are, are moving towards transparency at the time a buying decision is made. Um, the other thing that we really have a problem with is, is, is there's, there's no point in disclosing your remuneration and commissions if at the time the committee sees that they, they say, we actually don't want this, um, the, this remuneration structure, but they are limited by going elsewhere because in their strata management contract, there is a clause which says, if you insure with a provider that is not one of ours, then we will charge you an extra strata management fee of X percent. Um, and, and, and I think that these contract conditions are very choice limiting. Um, so it, uh, going back to the question, it's not always as simplistic as saying, well, it's a matter of negotiating between the strata manager and broker for your, for, for your remuneration, particularly in instances where um, the, the, the contract condition simply limits the choice um, of, of consumers. Thank you, Nikki. Okay, thanks, Tyrone. And Liz, you were wanting to say something? Yeah, um, I was just sort of um, going to follow up on what Damon was saying, um, that it's an, it is an open industry. Um, there are We are seeing a lot of brokers entering the strata market. Um, they aren't always familiar with strata, um, and they are um, basically just transacting a process without intimate knowledge of the property and the risk. Um, it's really just on face or premium value. Um, we're also seeing some strata um, brokers that are strata, and this I'm just generalising because we all need to up our game and come together for a best outcome. So this is just a general discussion. We are also seeing some specialist strata brokers who are still inserting general advice warning. This advice has been prepared without taking into account the client's objectives, financial situation or needs. Um, please refer to the PDS. So that's clearly saying, go and find it out yourself. So it's, it's, a, it's a problem throughout the whole industry that we all need to address and move forward together in reality. So thanks. Okay. Nikki. Thank you. And Chris? Thanks, Nikki. Um, Tyrone raises a good point around choice, and I think it's important. I'd like to see a model similar to the New South Wales Agency Agreement where that choice around the receipt of commission is made between the owners corporation and the strata manager at the time of entering into an agreement. So in New South Wales, there is a choice of either the manager receiving the commission, not receiving a commission, and therefore amending their fee, or rebating that commission. And that is negotiated up front when the fee is done. 
If at a point in time during that term of the contract, which is maximum of three years, the owner's corporation decides to change that commercial arrangement, well, then they've changed the terms upon which the manager was engaged. So there is a clause which enables then the manager to pay based on that negotiated choice up front for that insurance commission piece. But I think it's about getting consistency. And I think it's about having an ongoing conversation. I think these are healthy conversations because hopefully there's consumers who understand now when those choices are up front, what they mean. Thanks so much. And um, Arnie, would you like to jump in at that point? Yeah, I actually would like to state some positives out of this as well, because I have you know, seen a lot of strata managers and brokers when the premiums are going up like 50%, 100% sometimes due to various reasons like claims or defects or whatever you want to call it. But a lot of people out there who actually voluntarily don't take commission for that renewal and do the right thing with a client as well. Yes, there is a choice. Yes, there are a lot of um, scenarios here, but we cannot forget the fact that brokers and strata managers who are out there still doing the right thing by the client. So that is a fair statement by John, but there's a lot more into that as well. So, and having said that, there are there are strata managers and brokers who do not do that for their client and they keep asking for more discount, but you know, there are, there are things that we can do, there are things that we can't do, but there are still strata managers and brokers out there who do not take commission if, if the prices go up by 50, 100%. So I thought I'll raise that because this is kind of going only one way, but there is the other side to this conversation as well. Okay, thank you for bringing that up, Arnie. And Will, what would you like to say? Yeah, I was quite interested in the idea about uh, owners out there not really being vulnerable and not really having any power. I don't really think that's the case at all. They've got a great deal of power. Body corporate managers only have one, two or three year contracts. If you're not happy with the services that your manager's providing you, you should exercise your power over the, over the contracts and maybe look at changing your managers. What I'd encourage all owners to do is speak to their manager about the system and make it an understanding of it. A good manager should be able to explain it to you clearly, uh, all of the pros and cons, and then a good, a good owner should be able to make a, good, uh, a valid decision on that basis. But if you just have the idea that somehow managers are just manipulating uh, owners for their own means, I don't think that's really correct. That's not really how I've seen the industry operate uh, in the years that I've been in it. I think managers generally want owners to get a good deal out of out of their out of their body corporates. So, but what they need is that the owners to come back and assist them with that. They want to be relationship partners with them, not controlling them. Uh, from an owner's perspective, we have to bear in mind that you have a AGMs are called every year, but a great many AGMs, no one even shows up. For example, a lot of AGMs struggle to get a quorum. Um, if owners want things to change, I think it's important that they take those opportunities that are available to them, avail themselves of the information, and then interact when the opportunity is afforded. It's not simply something where we can say our oh, owners are just vulnerable and we have to do everything to support them. It has to be a two-way street between both parties. Right. Thanks, Will. I might just get Tyrone to speak. Thanks, Nikki. Just a couple of points going back to what the SCA have said. So the one thing that I did want to make a comment on is that strata management contracts can sometimes be three years, but insurance contracts can be one year. And the real problem here with, with agreeing in a three years in advance on, where, on the remuneration structure under a strata policy is some buildings, particularly those that have issues that arise throughout that three-year term, have exponential increases in premiums. And, and, and what it means is that whilst the committee might see it fair at the time um, they don't they don't fully understand that throughout that three-year period the premiums could change and increase so I, I, I do have to say that I, I have some concerns about the um, upfront negotiation and the other point as well is that that that's not the the, the 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 way it's raised with consumers is it's put on point 20 of an insurance contract often right so um, I, I think that that's another another point and on the just lastly on the issue of vulnerable consumers um, will look I just wanted to acknowledge that the majority of strata managers are doing the right thing um, and I've worked with Tower Body Corporate on a number of mutual clients and I can say that you don't engage in any of the practices that are concerned for us and exemplify exactly how we think strata managers should act. Um, and I, I do understand that you, you probably haven't seen some of these vulnerabilities, but I certainly have, and I've certainly seen some concerning practices in the industry um, that, that, that do bring, that, that where strata managers are exploiting vulnerabilities of, of consumers. Thanks, Tyrone. Okay, we'll move on to this question. As broker fees are usually a percentage of the premium, does the broker have a vested interest in looking for higher premiums? So I'll ch throw that one to Damon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, and if that, that is, again, that's a concern. That is potentially a conflict of interest. We have to be very careful around, it's the same as the uh, commission basis, which invariably historically been up to 20%. 
So we'll charge a broker fee based on the, which is more often than not, and historically has been a percentage of the base premium. The, the broad theory is when you're going out to market or you, and that may be getting some quotes to then go back to the holding insurer and maybe getting them to uh, review their renewal terms and keeping them a bit honest, the broad theory, or you place it somewhere else, if you get a better, better uh, premium that has comparable cover, right? Um, the, the broad theory is you're charging a percentage of that base premium, and that's the best premium you can obtain for the customer in the market. So you're acting in the best interests of the consumer by getting them the best uh, premium and policy coverage that they then are happy with and accept. So, but look, that, that does have some... Um, Complexities at times, and I only just mentioned one before. We've, as as, um, as insurers, as brokers, we've seen examples where, and I mentioned before, I think in my in my topic, you, we need to this one size fits all with commissions and broker fees. Is uh, look, it works as a model generally, but we need to often think outside the box. And what I was I hope I referred to before is we need to be more agile, and we are being more agile as an industry. Whether the strata managers looking at a net model, looking at a no commission model, and then we share a broker fee that's a reasonable fee for service, et cetera. Um, just one point is, um, I'll just bring up a quick example. Arnie, you reminded me. So a few years ago, everyone knows we had combustible cladding come out as a major issue, okay? Uh, a certain premium, I won't say who the insurer was, Arnie. Uh, a certain premium went out, let's say, look, don't quite know this, it was $30,000 premium, okay? It was disclosed and reported that it had combustible cladding. That premium doubled overnight because now we've got a whole lot of combustible cladding on it. So it went from $30,000 to $60,000, okay? The strata manager here in Victoria, who's a very good company, I consider a friend, very reputable. They want to do the right thing by their customer. The first thing they said was, well, we need to get, get the commission off this. We need to net this out because just because we've now got a report saying there's combustible cladding on the premium, well, I don't expect my commission to double. I haven't done twice as much work and my staff haven't done twice as much work. So, all right, we netted that out. We forget the commission. That's now artificial, okay? So we work back to a reasonable broker fee share that's a fee for service that's commensurate with what they're doing and what they were in in previous years. So that's an example, as Arnie sees in the industry, that I see in the industry, of where that model tends to work, but sometimes it doesn't. So we need to think outside there. So we've got very straight, very strata management clients in our, uh, in our business where we'll have models where, let's not go through them, but it's agile. Of, of the 20% commission, they might take 15, we can take five. Or on a very small product, we'll take 1%, charge a $100 broker fee. As long as it's a reasonable fee for service, it's disclosed and the customer's happy with it. But the point is we do need to be agile at times. Um, and that's a good example. So a simple, again, I refer to 20 plus 10 or 20 plus 20, that's not going to cut it. To cut it 10 years ago, I'm not going to do it now. Okay, thanks, Damon. And Liz, you've got something to say about that? Yeah, look, I um, agree with Damon um, and basically what the industry is doing and I also often see it and we've done the same. Where if uh, As a manager, we basically know where premiums fairly well sit because we see enough of them. If they don't seem right, we'll push them back to the broker or the insurer direct and we'll just say, hey, can you tweak this? This property is actually quite good, hasn't had many claims. And we'll have the conversation. It's not just, you know, we, we don't just receive, you know, the renewal and say pay it. Um, because that will cause, a, it's easier to solve the problem than it is to deal with the undue angst and emotion from all the owners. And of course, um, as Will said, we want to build strategic long-term partners partnerships. We're not transactional. We're not there for a churn and burn as some people think that we are. We're there for the long-term. It is the long-term that a strata manager will see a real return on the services they provide. Um, and there's has even with the cladding issue, we've seen the same thing where um, it was some ridiculous amount of 5% on a building, it got stamped the wrong way, there was a $200,000 excess plus the premium increased, we, you know, ran, said no that's not right, ran around, you know, did the groundwork, got the documentation to have that reduced, and we have also Dare I say, we've also um, asked an insurer to reduce the premium on properties that we have, you know, 15 and 20 year relationships with, um, sorry, to, re uh, to reduce our commission. Um, just, you know, because we go, no, nah, that's not right. We know that they're quite happy with that insurer. Can we look at that? And we'll actually take a bit of the cut as well. So I agree with that too. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Liz. And Karen? 
Thanks, Nikki. Um, if a separate fee for service can be organised, wouldn't it be simpler for everybody if that was just the default position? And it would save all that decision making around, oh my gosh, they've got cladding, the premium's doubled, um, it's not fair or it is fair for us to take a percentage of that. And I'm thinking particularly, um, I've had a member in this past week send through a disclosure form from their strata manager, um, so they're in New South Wales, and two of the brokerages are offering 50 and 55% commissions, and I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Karen. Michael? Yeah, just a quick point. I, I, you know, we've got a wonderful panel, and um, they really do exemplify uh, some of the professionalism that we can expect to see. Um, but, you know, lawyers, we're paid pessimists. And um, unfortunately, we see the other end of the spectrum. And I don't think there's enough recognition of that in this discussion. Um, there's a lot of cheerleading for the current model. There's a lot of that's the way it's always been. So that's the way it should always be. If the strata management profession wants to be a profession, at the moment, it's not a profession. If it wants to be a profession, then it must act professionally. You cannot have two masters and you cannot put yourself in a position of conflict between the best interests of your client body corporate and your own. You cannot do that whilst you are receiving these sort of commission arrangements. That is inherent in the Trowbridge report. It is a fact at law. It's a legal conclusion, people. So uh, unfortunately, I think we're missing the point. There's a lot of talk about disclosure. I've tried to explain that disclosure doesn't fix this. If strata managers want to be a profession and to be welcomed into the group of professionals, the least that you have to do is the Trowbridge recommendations and phase this out. If I charged for a conveyance in accordance with the value of the property, as opposed to the amount of work that I did, I'd have no clients, they would shoot me, all right? And if I was taking my remuneration from a third party, but I was acting for you and I told you about that, you would rightly say, well, are you acting in my best interest or theirs? Um, this is, I, I think we're missing the point, ladies and gents, and I challenge you to address that. Thanks, Michael. Now, Chris, you've got your hand up. I, just, I want to touch on a couple of things. Um, it's important to note that the vast majority of schemes in Australia are under 10 lots. So when we talk about a fee-for-service model on, a, on an hourly basis, we need to give consideration to what impact that has on smaller schemes. And to date, I've seen no modelling that supports that consumers would be better off outside of this remuneration structure. So I'm just going to put that out there because we often gravitate to large schemes with cladding in, in the CBD. The 80% of the schemes in Australia are 10 lots or less. They have modest uh, premiums relative to those bigger ones. And therefore, the ad valorem fee structures there, in, in most cases, don't meet the work that's done by the manager in terms of a fee for service. I just want to park that one because it's important to note when we make decisions or grand statements, they apply to the entire industry. Um, Karen, to your point, I haven't seen this 50% one and I can't talk on behalf of brokers, but perhaps it's 50% of the income received by the broker that gets split, um, only because it sounds like a very large amount and I would be concerned. I think when we talk about the quantum of receipt, no one is comfortable with quantums of receipt where you get 20, uh, sorry, 40%, 60% um, insurance commission broker fee arrangements. I think that's where this transparency piece comes in because we need to make sure that it is appropriate when you talk about the total work that's done. So I think, I think we all agree there because it's easy to sensationalize some of these instances of poor behavior. And I will call out that there are managers and there are conducts that no one agrees with, but I don't think that can categorize or inform our view for this entire process. I need to bring it back to there's some really good, I mean, Michael, you raised some very good points. I, I, we have to agree to disagree on a few things. I think strata management sector absolutely is a profession. We, we have in New South Wales put in place a professional standard scheme to that effect. The insurance piece and the commission piece is a complicated, convoluted insurance structure that needs to be supported by remuneration somewhere. If you remove the strata manager completely, to, to Tyrone's point, I think you said your remuneration model with no commission is the best. 
Well, I would argue who pays for that role that the strata manager does? Because I think it oversimplifies the fact that work needs to be done by someone. If it's the broker that has to do it, so be it. That might serve your purposes or others. If it's the strata manager that pays on a fee for service, so, so be it. But I think we can't lose sight of those facts need to be remunerated. Finally, I mean, I, I know it's all well and good that we can ventilate these issues pretty healthily, but we are off the back of, I think, the most exhaustive federal reviews that we've had in some time that looked at the very core of this issue. The, the one question that I point to is, Michelle Levy was asked to examine whether insurance commissions should be banned, restricted, modified, or changed in other ways. And, and from what I've seen, there has been no case for consumer harm that prompted her to say, yes, I think that should be banned. So I think we've also got to put, the, there is a lot of work that sits behind this where there is data, there is evidence, there is a lot of consumer input, and the government, two governments, have come back and said, effectively, at this stage, the status quo is appropriate, subject to us improving disclosure and transparency. Now, Chris, as we're barrelling towards the end of the session, and I really want to ask this question, though, and the question is, what does the future look like? Will Strata Insurance Commission still be a thing in five years? And I might leave that firstly with you and then go through the other panellists. Look, I think these conversations will continue. I think they're healthy. I think we're going to see an evolving choice for consumers. Um, I, I would like to see models that suit the circumstances for those buildings. So we heard about Northern Australian buildings. We've heard about big buildings. Every large building we have that is super complicated, whether that be in a compulsory management or one where there is significant insurance issues, we have a negotiated uh, premium and, uh, sorry, negotiated commission structure, which is significantly less than any of the ad valorem structures. So I think that's appropriate. I'd like to see that become the norm, but it's difficult to legislate that. But I would also like to see the consumer via these forums and other become more informed so we can have these conversations. These healthy conversations are what advances our industry and we need to have different opinions. Uh, Tyrone, I'll be reaching out afterwards. We, we, we need to have conversations that move these things forward. Okay, thanks so much, Chris. And Tyrone, I'll call you up next. I guess up until to now, our organisation has not ad ad advocated for a ban on commissions. Um, and we are not advocating for strata managers to not be remunerated for the, for the work that they're doing. Um, we advocate for fair commissions. That's really what we're advocating for right now. And we want commissions that are fair, um, that consumers uh, and the consumer considerations and protections are put in place. And that's what we're advocating for right now. Michael raised some really good points, I think, um, which are points that, that we will probably be, be taking offline and considering a little bit further. Uh, but as it stands right now, we are advocating for fair commissions. And we believe that the strata management industry needs to um, liaise and, and work better with consumers on this issue and talk about the issues rather than simply just lobbying for what's in strata management managers' in, interests. I would encourage the strata manager to lobby for what's in the best interest of the industry and consumers and strata managers as a whole, as opposed to simply just talking and, and, and speaking to, to their own to their own interests. So I, I do welcome um, any 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 su suggestion of the industry working with consumers on this issue. So thank you very much, Nikki. Thanks, Tyrone. And Michael, I'll ask you to speak next. Yeah, look, um, I'd underscore the fact that uh, at no stage have I said that people shouldn't be remunerated properly for the work that they do, the valuable work that they do and expert. Um, in terms of the future, how does it look? Well, I don't know. I know one thing, um, and that is that uh, where an industry doesn't change when it ought, then particularly if they're exposed to a legal liability, um, they can expect cases to flow. You know, I'm more than happy to look at instances where bodies corporate believe that they have been put into a position of being asked for consent uh, on the basis of inadequate disclosure. Um, sorry if that sounds like a tout for business, but at the end of the day, what I see here is that the pace of change is a bit glacial um, and uh, everybody recognises that there's a need. Uh, the reality of the political uh, process is that uh, rapid change is rare and there will be change over a period of time. Um, but, you know, the law and statute, the case law and statute works together. So maybe we'll see an arrow asset management case involving a body corporate manager. Uh, and then uh, body corporate managers will then say, well, I need to really lift my game uh, in relation to disclosure. Okay, thank you. Um, and Karen, we might ask you to speak next. I guess I look at the this principle and think if it's possible to 
uh, have a simpler process for the placement of insurance, then uh, it behoves all of us to, to look towards that. The fact that there have been so many inquiries, I think, speaks to the fact that there are concerns. Um, and another part of this, of course, is the strata management agreements, which really need to be more balanced in terms of, uh, you know, consumer good versus strata manager. I think that's a really important part of this conversation as well. Thanks. Thank you. Arnie? Well, the way I look at the future is we're definitely going to evolve and do better to the client. Like there are a lot of things I agree with and there are some things I don't agree with. Um, you know, the cheerleading side of things, because the vast majority, as I mentioned, are doing the right thing by the client. Maybe we will take down the path of, say, real estate agents where they cap their commissions to a dollar figure. We need to have enough data. We need to do enough research to say, OK, if your premium goes up by this percentage, this is where we cap our commission. But at the end of the day, whether you want to call it commission, whether you want to call it fee, people deserve to be remunerated for the work they put in. I'll, I'll put it down to that and say how it's going to evolve. I don't have a crystal ball, but there are definitely, as I said, the vast majority are doing the right thing by the client. Okay, thank you. And Liz? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, as someone said to me this morning, no one has an issue with commissions with cars, selling cars, where the fee structure is there. Uh, a real estate agent might sell your $30 million property and they receive a whopping commission. And Michael, that's just one property, but yet down the road, they're only receiving a, a small commission on the 500,000. Where's the point of value and the difference there? Um, but I do agree with what um, Chris and a few others have said. I, I think that knowing the regional point of difference um, with insurance um, and the intricacies of different buildings, it would be good to probably see a few different models or samples um, so that we could utilise this when we are actually um, presenting our strata management contracts. Um, bigger buildings typically correlate back to bigger complexes, bigger intricacies. And so therefore, when you're looking at the 47 items that a strata manager typically provides in services, you are multiplying those out across many properties and many issues and many assets, pools, gyms and everything else, which is a complex beast. So, yeah, I think it's, um, it's work in progress and hopefully industry can get together and um, come out with a good outcome. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks. OK. And Damon? Yeah, just a couple of observations and I will answer the question. For those of uh, you like me who have been around long enough, I'll just, um, I'm a glasses half full guy. I can remember seven or eight, nine years ago when we had blue skies in Australia. We didn't have any large Queensland, New South Wales floods. We didn't have AC, before the ACT hailstorms. We had about, the insurers in Australia had about two or three, three or four really good years in terms of weather claims events. We had a lot of new entrants coming into the strata insurance market back then. They were pretty keen on getting in there. And we were seeing premiums going down 10, 20, 30% year on year for about two or three years before it corrected about five years ago. I, I was always very pleased to see that the vast majority, we keep mentioning of strata managers and business partners, we had absorbed that drop in their commission earn and didn't come back to try to get it somewhere else. And anyone that Try to. I didn't have a lot of respect for. I could count them on one hand. So the vast majority of strata managers did the did the right thing back in a very very um, easy soft insurance market as well. What's going to happen in the next five years? Your guess is as good as mine. But from an insurance professional's point of view, again, we just as an industry need to get more professional. We need to inform our customer. It's great that Karen and OCN and various stakeholders are now involved doing that. We're the strata manager and SCA industry are doing that. We need to inform the customer so they, again, transparency, they know what they're getting for their buck. If we don't self-regulate this better from a broker's perspective, we've got neighbor the code of practice improvements, even more onerous disclosure requirements, which I take on board has been very, very helpful for some in the industry. Uh, if we don't get this better and we don't keep improving professionally um, and it'll get taken away from us. There'll be all the, there'll be more, uh, there could be government oversight regulation. The theory asset could come in and, legislate this out or legislate a commission goes to 10%. Well, you end up going down a model where, all right, the broker's going to have to be involved. There'll be a fee charge because as Michael, as Michael pointed out, we don't do anything for nothing. And that broker fee would then be split somehow with a strata manager for all the, a uh, lot of the good work they do at the coalface. So we'd have to look at another model. I don't think it's going to happen. 
I don't think it's right. And as Tobridge, I'll just finish off, as Tobridge points out himself in report two last year, he said, I'm very wary about whether an alternate model is actually not going to cost the owners corporations more. Be careful what you wish for. And a lot of these smaller uh, under eight lots, under 10 lot, whatever it risks, um, that commission isn't a lot compared to what the, the strata managers actually do. So be careful. But we'll have to watch the space and just keep trying to improve as a professional uh, bodies. Excellent. Thanks, Damon. And Will? Yeah, I think over the next five years, you're going to see a much greater diversification of offers from body corporate managers. Um, what exactly they'll look like, I, I, I can't say for sure. Some of that conversation is going to be driven by people like Michael. He's obviously got some really pertinent points to make. Some of it's going to be driven by people like Karen from the consumer side. Most of the decisions are going to be made between uh, the consumers themselves and the body corporate managers at the point they're signing and signing the agreements and uh, they are, you know, deciding between each other how they want their body corporates to be raised. I think everyone should be welcoming those changes because ultimately we might get a better, stronger industry out of it. Okay, wonderful. And then, Chris, we are right on time now, but I might just call to you to wrap up the session if you'd like to do that and put any final comments forward and then we might um, we might finish there. Thanks, Nikki. Appreciate being given the opportunity to wrap it up. I just want to wrap it up on the value of, of this sort of dialogue. Um, you've brought a cross-section of people together here who have really strong opinions and also deep experience. And I think respectful and robust conversation is how we've got to a point where we're hopefully going to find a balance. Um, I think the management side of the sector needs to lean into and listen to. And I think uh, from my experience in New South Wales over many years and dealing with Karen, uh, one of the best collaborations we've had is listening to the voice of the consumer um, and listening to Karen. That doesn't mean that we wholeheartedly agree on everything, but we certainly have perspective. Um, and I think that's how you get a healthy industry. So Tyrone, you raised the, the, the listening piece. I think that's incredibly important for the industry. Um, and Michael, you raised some really good points about professionalism and probably some introspection that the industry needs to do because we do hold ourselves as professional and we need to keep pushing that and elevating that advancement. So Nikki, for, certainly from the industry's perspective, um, I found it to be very productive and we'll take things forward where we can we can move to help to support consumers and help educate them through this process. And I think Lookup Strata has done a great job. Thanks so much, Chris. It's been a pleasure being able to have this conversation. I think by the sounds of it, even the panellists have been open to different ideas that have come up during the conversations as well. And hopefully these conversations will extend offline. Uh, hopefully there are lots of owners out there who have watched the session and they can start to have discussions with their strata managers around commissions and ask the questions. One of the things, one of the conversations I had with someone leading up to the session was that sometimes owners ask the wrong questions. And my response to that is that at least they're asking the questions. I'm happy for owners to ask a wrong question because at least they're asking a question and there really is, isn't any wrong questions anyway because it does lead to different responses and different perspectives. So thanks so much Chris. I thank everyone in the session uh, who assisted me in pulling this session together because I did reach out and, and lean on some people out there and I do appreciate the input that they gave me and thanks very much for our audience as always. Thanks for joining us everybody. We really appreciate your time. Thank you Nikki. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye. If you gained value from this video, please hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're looking for information about parking, strata insurance, defects and more, head over to lookupstrata.com.au or sign up to our free weekly newsletter via the link in the description box below.